This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast. There was a certain old farmer back in the eastern part of my home state of Kansas who suddenly struck oil out on his cornfield, and soon this farmer became so wealthy he became conceited and one day ran into an airport ticket office, scurried over to the counter, plopped down a $1,000 bill and said, Give me a ticket. The ticket agent said, Where to? And the farmer said, Anywhere. I got business all over. Well, you may never strike oil in your cornfield or find a pearl in your oyster stew or even one of your gold fillings in a candy apple, but you, too, believe it or not, have business all over. You have relatives all over this world, your brothers and sisters, in the global family of God. And the business you have is what Jesus of Nazareth 2,000 years ago called the Father's business. He said, I must be about my Father's business, and that business is doing what God wants you to do. God's plans, God's purposes, the will of God for your life. Jesus taught us to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done. He said the kingdom of God is within you. And the kingdom of God is the will of God, dominant within your motivations, within your mind, within your plans. What an adventure to belong to this great worldwide family of God. And you do. It is written in Jeremiah, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Not just God of a few. The family of God is not a select, snobby sect, not just one race, one nation, but all of humankind. God will not, as they used to say, break your plate at the family table. God cares about you. God knows every problem in your life. But more than that, God knows every possibility in your life. God knows what you could be, what you could become if you will follow the guidance of God. If you will live in faith, Jesus said, have faith in God. And he said, according to your faith, so shall it be unto you. Let faith be the death warrant of your doubt. Serve notice on your skepticism. Evict your indecisiveness and begin to live in courage and confidence as the son or the daughter of God you were born to be. Because real religion, the faith which Jesus taught, is a reality, not make-believe, not some sort of phantasm. It's real. God loves you really now. God's spirit indwells your mind really now. God has a will and the power to accomplish that will for you not tomorrow, not a year from now, but now, this very instant. Real religion is not just a warm, creedal cocoon of silken sentimentality to spin around yourself to protect you from the rigors of life. It rather inspires and invigorates you to live courageously in this world and to be a conqueror by faith, to live triumphantly. For the great triumph is that of good over evil, and Jesus taught overcoming evil by goodness. He said, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, pray for those who despitefully use you. And love is the spiritual chevron of the child of God. It is the badge, the mark that identifies you as a God-knowing family member. Jesus said, by this will all men know that you are my disciples, my followers, that you love one another. He said, love one another as I have loved you. On one occasion, there were two grade school boys who were fighting during recess out on the playground. They were brothers who attended the same school, but they just couldn't seem to get along. The teacher saw them scuffling, ran over and separated them and said, let's have a little more brotherly love. And one of them said, you'd have more brotherly love if I had a more lovable brother. Jesus didn't say, do to others as they have done to you. He said, do to others as you would have them do to you. Treat people as you yourself desire to be treated. But that requires a source of love beyond ourselves, the love of God. God is not sitting in a celestial swivel chair, leaning back disinterestedly, watching as the centuries pass by. God cares in an intense, immediate sense about you and about your life. And you're a member of God's family. But what is a family? A house full of sullen relatives living together under one roof, in an uneasy truce, a clan of people mutually tax-deductible, just a bunch of folks who sign the same last name on their credit cards. What is a family? Those who watch the same television set, eat at the same table because it's cheaper to buy groceries in quantities? Or is there something more 
to a family than this. Something spiritual. There is in God's family because it is based on love. God rules this entire universe by the power of his love. The almost blinding affection, the incomprehensible affection God has for you. If you could feel that for just one moment as I attempt to describe it into this broadcasting microphone and as my voice is literally heard around the world, if any of you listening to this will dare to believe that God loves you with an eternal and an infinite love, that will be the beginning of a transformation in your life astounding to behold. It will be the demarcation point of literally a new way of life for you. Long ago, there was a powerful king in Europe who had a son, a baby boy, but because he did not wish this lad to grow up spoiled and conceited by the luxurious life of a pampered prince in court, the king secretly made arrangements to have this boy, while yet a baby, reared in the home of poor but stalwart farming folk. And it was done. The years passed by. This lad grew in strength of body, mind, and character until at last he became a young man, courageous, unspoiled. And he yet believed he belonged to the farmer's family, and really he did, for they had reared him. But at last one morning he was summoned to the king's court, and it was at last proclaimed to him that in fact he was a prince, an honored member of the very royal family. And that is what I am saying to you, that you are of the royal family. You are of the family of God. Your home on earth is only your home away from home because your real home is in the spiritual family circle of God's sons and daughters. That's who you really are. That's what you were born and created to be. You're a child of God. Mount Columbia is the geographic center of North America. But the spiritual center of the entire universe is the living God, and that same great God can be at the spiritual center of your life as well, and should be. That God, the architect of infinity, is your father and your friend. Who but an infinitely wise and loving father could have a boundless stream of inspiration and insight and good cheer and goodwill? At any moment, we will choose to draw from that in prayer, in worship. The cosmic quest is to become like God. Jesus said, be you therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven is perfect. And this is achieved by being true to supreme values, truth and beauty and goodness, and living in love for God and love for others. You do this by this wholehearted seeking of the Father's will, His wisdom, His guidance down the path of your earthly life. God is your closest, your nearest friend, and eternity beckons to you calls to you, and everywhere opportunities for service call you to a closer kinship with your brothers and your sisters in this worldwide family of God. There is no greater thrill than finding God and taking up the adventure of becoming like God, because God is your Father and is love, spiritual, wise, righteous, merciful, dynamic. And to come to know God, not merely to have theological theories about God, but I mean to know God in the sense that you can talk with God, you can share your inner life with God is the beginning of joy inexpressible. There's one occasion in the Scriptures depicting Jesus involved in prayer. Listen to this, the J.B. Phillips translation. Then they arrived at a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit down here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John. My heart is in bitter anguish, he told them. Stay here and keep a watch for me. And then he walked forward a little way and flung himself down on the ground, praying that if it were possible... He might not have to face the ordeal which lay before him. Dear Father, he said, all things are possible to you. Please let me not have to drink this cup. And yet it is not what I want, but what you want, which is important. That is the greatest prayer which mortal man can pray. That is the greatest prayer possible to pass from human lips to know and do the will of God. Not merely what is expedient, what is convenient, what might be popular, but what God desires that you do. It is written in Malachi, Have we not all one Father? Hath not one God created us? 
Yes, all are the children of God. The religion of Jesus is not to fear God as master, but love God as father, and every man and woman as brother or sister. But love is intriguing. You cannot demand love the way a thief demands money. God does not bully you into loving him. God loves you into loving him. That's why God is so eminently lovable, because God is so loving. You ever try to make friends with a stray dog, a little suspicious, uncertain about you, a dog that mistrusts you a bit? How did you make friends with that dog? By shouting and waving your arms and stamping your feet? That only frightens an animal. The way to make friends is not to scare that dog, but befriend it. Now, if you know that much about dogs, don't you suppose that the infinite God knows that much about human beings, about you specifically? God is not going to try to scare you into loving him. God is going to love you into loving him. But you must believe it. You must have the faith to know it in this moment that you are a child of God. It is written in Psalm 34, O taste and see that the Lord is good. <laughs> that is true. You say taste and see. That means experience. Have the faith to claim it. Say, God, if you're there, I want to know it. I want to experience this love. I want to have this, taste it. In whatever way I can conceive it or perceive it spiritually, I want that. And God will respond to you in this moment. According to your faith, said Jesus, so shall it be to you. Another dog story. If your dog is carrying a piece of garbage around in its mouth, and you try to take it away from the dog, you know you're going to have a tug of war because suddenly that dog wants that piece of trash more than anything else in the world and you have to fight for it. But the moment you show that dog something better, a piece of fresh meat, a good bone, watch how quickly the dog drops the other thing. Show him something better. Don't just try to tell him how bad the garbage is. Give him something better. Uh, you've heard some religious individuals who will spend all their time just telling people how bad sin is and how evil evil is instead of how good God is. It is written, the goodness of God leads to repentance. Don't just repent because sin is bad, for certainly it is, but because God is good and because God's great love beckons to you and calls to you in this moment. The Father of all has a Father's affection for you and has waited all the years of your life, perhaps, for this very instant when it enters your consciousness that you are loved, that God is real, that God's plans and purposes for your life can become fulfilled if you will have the faith to seek. For said Jesus, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be opened, ask and you will receive. May that transforming moment of all of human life come for you right here and right now this very moment. And then write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644 USA. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviate it, SRI, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644 USA. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, all this literature yours with no cost, charge, or obligation. For those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644-USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day. <laughs>